Hey, this is Sarge again. Been getting a lot of questions on natural animal skin grips, so I figured I'd make another video to answer a few of those questions. Uh, I do things a little differently than most people do, and we're going to go through those. I actually had my hands on a, a, I won't mention who did it, but there's a competitor out there making some grips, and I honestly was amazed at the difference between theirs and mine. So I'm going to go over the features of mine, and then you'll be able to make an educated decision on if skin grips are for you, and if so, who you want to make them. Okay, what we've got here are three separate skin grips. This set is King Cobra, this set is Rattlesnake, and this set's a little different in, in that it's Stingray, and it's very thick skin. I brought those out for a specific reason. But uh, as you can see, the skins themselves are beautiful, and the way I do mine is I, I keep them to stock thickness and the stock radius, okay? This set is almost done, not quite. This set is almost done, not quite. Or wait, no, this set is done, I'm sorry. And this set is almost done, not quite. And I, I did that for a reason also with these three sets. One thing you'll notice is I, I lay out my grips so that they're most aesthetically pleasing. You've got the, the belly scales along the back with the back scales here, which King Cobra is kind of unique in that. Um, so that when it's on, you have that, and it's at the angle of your grip. You can see that's just kind of a, a cool thing to see there. And a rattlesnake, I lay it out to where the, this happens to be prairie rattlesnake. Very distinctive pattern. Uh, I skin the scales. If you don't know about rattlesnake, the skin itself has like little blisters over the scales that need to be taken off before you can use the skin. And in the light here, you can see that each individual little scale has almost a trident of ridges through it. So it gives it a nice texture, nothing aggressive, but enough texture to uh, help you hold on to your weapon. Now the prairie rattlesnake, you can see what I'm talking about here when I say I lay my, my grips out properly. The, uh, the pattern is up through the middle of the grips, it's not off center. You know, I try and get each grip balanced between the two so they're not wildly different. Now these, the snake skins themselves, with the exception of a few, like the anaconda skin, um, some of the boa constrictor skins, those things are very thick, which is why I brought the stingray out, and I'll show you that in a minute. But nor what we would call normal snake skins, the rattlesnake, copperhead, king cobra, karung, all those skins, the skin itself is very thin. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how I adhere to the wood, but, but take my word for it, it's a very painstaking process. I have a lot of time in each set of these grips, and that's really what shocked me about what one of my competitors was doing. It was just, I was appalled, really. I'm, I'm sorry for the person that bought that set. Anyway, you'll look at the back. Now, these are not finished. These are in process. I just got done sanding the extra off the back, so it, it looks a little unfinished here. Uh, you can see the bushing holes aren't colored. Even my, my uh, magazine release hasn't been colored yet. It's another thing I do. I, I trim the skin around the hole. I don't just push it down into the hole, which is what I've seen a lot of guys do. Um, I also color, in, color around the bushings and around the uh, magazine release to match so that they blend in. Now on the back, you'll see this border. What that is, is every set of skin grips I make, I actually make in the woodworking business what is called a rabbit cut, which is just a shallow cut. And you can see the line here. It's a shallow cut, just a little thicker than the skin. So when I wrap these grips in the skin, I fold it over the edge onto the back. And then I fill that over with epoxy and sand it flat so that there is no ridge here at all. It's just smooth. What that does is it keeps, you can imagine if the skin just came to the edge of the grip and stopped, which is what I saw in that other set, anything that catches that edge is just going to start that skin peeling off. And once it starts peeling, you're done. It's over. My skin grips are always wrapped around to the back side. That, I don't know if you can tell scale here, but that's a shy quarter inch there. Wrapped around the back side and then epoxied there as well. Um, so that they're very durable. Snake skin itself is very durable. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's tough enough for the snake to crawl around on its whole life. So it, it's pretty tough material. Now that covers, and here you can see the set that's done. What I do is I, of course, sign it, but then I color in that border so it's uniform. You don't have places where the skin is maybe showing through a little bit like you do on the unfinished grips. So there's the finished set. Uh, you can see the that magazine release is, is colored. The bushing holes are colored in also. Now on the Stingray, people say, how can you do Stingray? Because you'll notice it's, again, stock thickness, it's the correct radius, it's the correct shape. I, I'm not going to tell you how I did it. It took me a lot of time to come up with this process. But this skin, Stingray skin, is a sixteenth or more of an inch thick, which presents its own problems. Because how do you get it radiused? And how do you hold the shape of a grip? I've, I saw one other set of Stingray grips 
uh, when I was figuring out how to start these things, and it was a block. It was really just a block. It had no shape to it. It almost had corners here instead of a radius across it. Very uncomfortable to shoot with, I would imagine. But that's why I take my time and develop these and try and uh, do the best I possibly can. This is a set, again, it's almost in process of finish. You can see that the Stingray skin is, it's almost if you took a thousand very tiny little BBs and glued them over the pelt, that's the texture of this. Well, you can see, again, see the, the texture, I hope you can see this in the picture, see those little gray circles, well, that's what those, those BBs are inside. That's because, again, wrapped it around into a little deeper rabbit cut because it's stingray, it's thicker pelt, and then I sand it flat. And I left these unfinished on purpose so you can see that. The skin is actually wrapped around the grip. Again, this will all be colored. The magazine notch will be made, magazine release notch will be made. I haven't even cut the bushing holes on these yet. They're still in process. But man, what a, what a beautiful set of grips that is. Um, I do that on all my skin grips. I hope this answers some of the questions that you would have on skin grips. If you have any more, if you go to Sarge's Grips, uh, my contact us button there will get you in touch with me and I, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. As you can see, I can do them for bobtails, governments, commanders, officers, 1911s of all kinds. Okay, so for now, this is Sarge signing off and thanks for watching. Bye.